Hi everybody, my name is George Furikan here on the Lights on Data show, live at AWS Summit at the IBM stand with Ron Dunlap. Welcome. Hi George, how are you? Good, good. So happy to see you in person. I did see one of your keynotes a few months ago. It was really inspiring, as per usual. And I Thank remember you. you're talking about the um, IBM's Gen Stack and how it can really empower the organizations to do more. And today you're also going to talk about how to put AI to work. Right. Right. So we're really looking forward to that session too. And I'm really curious from all of your experience, what examples stand out to you that really brought incredible improvement to the either employee or the customer experience? So I think uh, there's a few big patterns that we're finding are like the easiest to implement and you can have impact right away. One classic example is leveraging it for employee service. You know, mm -hmm. you have all these policy and procedure documents, best practices, et cetera, that exist within an organization, often thousands and thousands of documents. You know, you as a worker may have a tough time finding the right thing for you. And so applying generative AI to go through all that content, be able to serve that up to an employee, is really powerful. And it's something that you can do. There's definitely data security concerns around where your data lives and everything like that. But it's a relatively simple technology solution to be yeah. able to drive a lot of value for the everyday employee. We're also seeing that applied to customers. We went through a whole customer service AI revolution previously with chatbots, and it took a lot of effort to build those. We spent a lot of time thinking about what should the AI say, how do we train it to properly understand. Generative AI is really transforming that, enabling you to deliver curated customer service experiences Definitely. that are a lot, uh, a lot easier. Definitely. And you know, I hope that we're going to see a lot more of these examples in the near future as more companies will embark on Gen AI and really adopt it and improve their efficiencies and customer experiences and employee experiences and everything in between. Yeah, I agree. I think one of the, the barriers that I do see for companies jumping on it right away is they don't know exactly how to ensure that when they're deploying that AI, they're doing it in a responsible fashion, right. that it's AI that's trustworthy and it's somewhat transparable as well and traceable. Right. Do you have any best practices that you recommend for companies to address all these issues? Yeah, I, I definitely do. Um, and I would even expand it, just thinking about the organizations that I've been working with, like the trust factor is really important. Yeah. And ensuring that you have the technology, but also the people to monitor how the application is performing, uh, to do little audits, to make sure that you know, any issues that are raised with the application, that all that kind of sur is serviced, um, or is surfaced, I should say, and is actually, you know, attended to is really, really important. You don't just deliver an AI solution and it lives in the ether. You have to attend to it, you have to care for it. Yeah. Um, and so that's a really important aspect. And then the other thing, thinking about organizations, like there's the ethical transparency, explainable, but it's also got to be business viable. And organizations have spent the last two years implementing all sorts of innovative solutions only to realize this works as a pilot, but it's too expensive in production. Right. Or we have other concerns. Is it going to be adopted by the employees? Has it been designed in a way that is intuitive for them to work with? And so all of these factors come together in how we think about you know, AI truly being adopted successfully and safely in the organization. And that's part of what I'm going to talk about today. Oh, I love it. Yeah, does it tie to the business strategy? Does it exactly. meet specific goals? Is it done with feedback uh, and the feedback loop from those that are serving it? So, yeah, love it. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, great. Thank you. And, you know, looking ahead, what excites you the most when it comes to Gen AI? What do you think are some of those trends that are coming up and what are we expecting to see more of? So, um, the last two years, it's really been focused on assistance. We all see that in interacting with ChatGPT. Mm -hmm. We all see that because it's like the easiest thing for us to implement standalone for an organization. Yeah. What I'm really excited about in the next couple of years is focusing more on the business problems than the standalone assistant. Mm -hmm. How are the AI solutions embedded in your workflow to perform functionality on your behalf? And part of what you're going to talk to my colleague Ted Trichu about, I'm sure, is going to be like agentic workflows and how that works in autonomous AI solutions. That's a really exciting you know, new era for AI yeah. that's just growing now and it's going to be a big focus for the next couple of years to drive even more business value and obviously citizen or employee or customer improvement. Sounds good. Well, the future looks bright and IBM is getting us there. So thank you for everything that you do. Thanks, George. It's been great chatting with you. Likewise. Thank you.